This is a fairly simple question about springs, just so we can practice Hooke's Law, which govern springs behavior. Hooke's Law states that the force of a spring is directly proportional to the amount it stretches by. And this, these are both vectors, technically, just to show that if you squeeze a spring, it's going to try and do the opposite by pushing back outwards. If you stretch a spring, it's going to be pulling back in. That you know as Hooke's Law. But in this context, first of all, you can see that we have two springs and you have a mass hanging off of it. In these sense, these springs are going to act somewhat like a string in a sense, in that they're only capable of pulling along itself. It's not going to have some funny um, four sideways. And that's why they call these springs are intention, much like a string. So the physical orientation of this spring will tell us the direction of the force. So let's see how the free body diagram looks like. For any body connected to two springs, each of the spring will give you a force. There's force A and force B. In this case, it's symmetrical, which makes things nice. And there's your 30 degrees, there's your 30 degrees. Because the spring is oriented that way, they can only pull in that way. Then what's always missing is, of course, your force of gravity. In this case, I won't write mg because they've given us this weight to be 15 newtons. So we know that this is 15 newton in the downwards direction. Before we go any further, of course, no free body diagram is complete without a x and y setup. Once we have that, it's just a matter of decomposing all the forces along your x and your y, so on and so forth. And then we can work out whatever number, because given that the mass is hanging here, we're going to assume that it's not moving, which means your v equals zero. But more importantly, it also means your acceleration is zero. So therefore, your net force equals ma must also be zero. Before we can actually add up the forces, let's decompose properly. Now, there's something we can take advantage of here uh, by symmetry. Because the problem is perfectly symmetric, we can tell that the magnitude of spring A force and magnitude of spring B force must equal each other, even though they are in different direction. So we'll just call that F for simplicity. So we don't have to write so much. But let's decompose FA into its components. FA is going to have a negative x component. And given that the angles over here, which is over here, your x component is going to use the sine instead of the cosine. So watch out where that triangle is. Don't just by rote memorize that x is always cosine. Not necessarily true. But it has a positive y component using the cosine. Similarly, spring B is going to have a positive x component, which you see is going to be exactly the opposite for FA because that's going to cancel out. But then the y component, they add up. Your sum of forces, of course, is the sum of all three forces, where, and then your gravity force, which is your weight, is going to be negative 15 Newton in the J hat direction. As you imagine, the two I components cancel out each other because they have to give you 0i, and then the 0j will result from these last two. Shifting things up a little bit, solving for f, it's going to give you this many newtons. Typing it up nicely. And once we have that tension, 
then getting the amount that is stretched by, because it's pulling, obviously we've stretched it, we use Hooke's Law. Again, Hooke's Law is F minus delta X, but here we know all the direction, so let's slap absolute value sign everywhere. And so we can ignore that negative sign because we're just dealing with magnitudes now. So we have the spring force is equal to K delta X. We know it's been stretched because it's pulling with a tension. Delta X then, of course, is simply some simple algebra. We have F to be 8.66025 newtons divided by my spring constant, which is given as that. Newton and Newton cancel out, mass flips up, and you expect to get meters, and of course you do, and that's your answer. You can say 43 centimeters, but the key here is that doesn't mean the length of the spring is 0.433 meters. It only been stretched by 0.433 meters. Important thing to keep in mind, this delta x is not the total length of spring. It's only how far it's moved from its rest position. Rest we define as whatever length it is when it's given no force.